Welcome to prayer meeting. Our devotional thoughts tonight are we walk by faith. And we'll be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 6 and going through verse 17. Paul, the apostle, writing to the church at Corinth. And he says, beginning at verse 6, So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The Apostle Paul sets forth a principle to be followed by Christians in all aspects of their lives. He says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Or as the Living Bible puts it, we know these things are true by believing not by seeing. We know that Jesus lives in our lives through the Holy Spirit. But the time we live in our existence on earth is time spent away from our eternal home with Jesus. Verse 8 expresses not a death wish, but real confidence in what we say we believe. We are confident. We are not afraid. We are of good courage. And we might even say we are cheerful at the thought of our eventual deaths because we know this is the door into the eternal presence of God. We walk, or we can say we live our lives in the constant awareness that our material human existence is only temporary no matter how long it lasts on earth. We have no guarantee of how long this life will last. For some, it is a very short time. And for some, it's a lot longer than they were expecting. But whatever our thoughts on life, the day of our transition is out there waiting for us. God knows the date. For some, he gives a hint in their situation of life when that time might come. But for most of us, It will just happen when it happens. Our faith is to guide the steps of our daily lives as if the next step lands us in eternity. Our faith not only makes us ready to meet Jesus, but it is to keep us prepared to meet him. At verse 9, he writes, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. It's a lot of words, but Paul reduces the principle to a practical application. The Living Bible restates verse 9 in very everyday words. So our aim is to please him always in everything we do, whether we are here in this body or away from this body and with him in heaven. I think that's pretty straightforward. We do many things every day, and most of those things are just daily living tasks we take for granted. Then there are things a little higher on Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory that are inextricably woven into our unconscious being. Now, many of those things are part of what we take for granted and we do automatically, and many of those involve choices we have to make from day to day. Now, rather than to discuss the five or six levels of the theory I mentioned, Paul takes us right to the end game and the outcome to which our faith is to direct us. He tells us in verse 10, we must all, oh, there's that big word, 
How many are included in all? If you are included in all, would you please raise your hand? Okay, if you're out there watching this on Facebook or YouTube, raise your hand because you're included in all too. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's what it all comes down to. That's what our life comes down to. That's what our faith comes down to. We must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And what is going to happen to each of us as we stand under the judgment of Christ? Well, Paul says that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Oh, wow. It sounds like everything, doesn't it? Okay. Our faith in Christ must motivate what we do in and with our bodies, you see, because that record follows us to the judgment. For the redeemed, we are saved by faith so that the past record of our sins no longer exists and our consciences are clear. Thank God for that. That's a beautiful reality. Living day by day by faith and obeying what that faith teaches us keeps us out of the snare of sin so that more sin will not be added to our record. And that's a good thing. This is very serious. And sad to say, far too many professors of Christianity are so haphazard with the issue of sin that they dabble here and there as if there was no consequence for what they do. But Paul says different. There is consequence. We will meet the record of what we do in our body, whether it be good or what? Bad. So, notice what Paul says about the judgment. He writes, Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Mm. The terror of the Lord. Are we supposed to be scared to death of God? Are we supposed to be cringing and cowering all the time that God's going to strike us down with a bolt of lightning or something like that? Well, in spite of what this sounds like, Jesus does not intend for us to be terrified of him as if he were an unfeeling and vengeful deity. There is a more dignified meaning to the word terror that escapes our English language. Adam Clark clarifies this for us. He said, this, I think, is too harsh a translation, which should be rendered, knowing therefore the fear of the Lord, which, strange as it may at first appear, often signifies the worship of the Lord or that religious reverence which we owe to him. It's a little different twist on that. And it makes more sense. Reverence, worship, awe, and respect of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep in mind 1 John 4, 18, where the Bible tells us, there is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? Cast out fear because fear involves torment. And Clark reminds us there, the man who loves God with all his heart can never dread him as his judge, as he is now made a partaker of his spirit and carries a sense of the divine approval in his conscience. He has nothing of that fear that produces terror or brings torment. The perfect love removes all terror relative to this day of judgment. Thank God we can have a clear conscience because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we accept that and take hold of that by faith. By faith. Verses 12 through 17. For we, Paul speaking of himself here, we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf. 
that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, concluding on what we just said, if anyone, okay, who's anyone? If you are in anyone, would you raise your hand? Okay, You're part of that all, right? And anyone is part of the all, okay? If anyone, oh, but here is a qualifier, is in Christ. That's the question you have to answer. Are you in Christ by faith? Well, what does that mean? He is a new creation. Well, what does that mean? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. Paul writes these words to the Corinthians personally. You see, a false apostle had been working to divide the church by pitting himself against Paul. In verse 13, Paul alludes to some criticism that was spoken against him as if he was beside himself or out of his mind. Here he lets them know they do not have to defend him against this person because God will let the example of his faith and the life he lives by that faith prove if he is really a follower of Christ or not. He tells them what they know he believes in verses 14 and 15. He said, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, this is the reality, that if one died for all, then all died. And if he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. With this faith guiding his life, and with this faith guiding their lives, he lays down an obvious ultimatum in verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Okay? And this is something we have to learn and understand in the day and time that we live in. We don't look at people and judge them by what we see. Okay? We don't regard them according to the flesh. We try the Spirit. Does that person have the Spirit of God? And the Bible teaches us that we can discern that. That is something that is felt on a spiritual realm. I know I have met people that I've never met before and sensed this person truly knows God. Have you had that happen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't judge people by the color of their skin, what their occupation is, what part of town they live in, if they have an accent, anything of that nature. We look to people to show us who they are through the reality of their spirit. So this then leads to the ultimate statement of faith that is to guide our lives as Christians in verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is. Okay? Present tense, right now. He is a new creation. Old things. What are the old things that we're talking about? Obviously, it's sin, self-love, okay? All that has passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And what are those things? Well, the next verse that says all things are of God. Thank God for a changed life, a being a new creation in Christ. If Jesus is in us, we are different from the person we were before we accepted him as Savior. 
if we have this experience, we will have a deep and unshakable faith that our walk in this life is following the footsteps of Jesus. We have the unshakable assurance that the moment we take that one step just beyond our last step on earth, we will immediately be in the presence of Christ. So let me ask you tonight, do you have that assurance? You can have it if you have repented of sin, if you have trusted in the atonement in Christ, and you are daily walking in his steps. Amen.